you are always competing. I will show you the danger. Let's learn. Can we go to the book of Genesis chapter 30? Genesis chapter 30. We are going to look at verse 1 and 2. And you know we usually stand up to read. I will read verse 1. You will read verse 2. If not that there is no time, we will have read the whole chapter. But it's so long. Let's see if we can take. Um, I want you to see some of those things. Ah, where do we do now? What do we do, Lord? Okay, let's take it to chapter 31. So we are going to be reading 15 and I'll read 16 verses. Cleared? I'll read verse 1. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister. And said unto Jacob, Give me children, or else I die. Now you will read verse 2. Please be fast on screen. Once one, let's go. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, Am I in God's stead? Who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? I'll read verse 3. Prepare verse 4 on screen. And she said, Behold, my maid build her go in unto her and she shall bear upon my knees that i may also have children by her verse 4 you will read verse 4 let's go and she gave him bilha had her handmaid to wife and jacob went into her now i read verse 5 and bilha conceived and bear jacob a son now you read verse 6. You know what you'll be doing to make it fast? I'll be reading my own verse from my Bible. You'll be projecting the other one. Let's And Rachel said, had, hmm. Therefore, she I read 7 here. And Bila, Rachel's maid, conceived again and bare Jacob a second son. You read verse 8. Let's go. I read verse 9 and when Leah saw that she had left bearing she took Zil Zilpha her maid and gave to her to and gave her to Jacob to wife now you read verse 10 and Zilpha Leah's maid bear Jacob a son I read verse 11 and Leah said a troop comet hmm. and she called his name God now you read verse 12. And Zilpha, Leah's maid, bear Jacob a second son. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. Now you read verse 14. Uh huh. And found and brought. Now I read verse 15. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldest thou take away my son's man, man, man drinks also? And Rachel said, Therefore, he shall lie with thee tonight, ah, hey, for thy son's mastery. <laughs> now you read verse 16. And Jacob came in. I was watching Phoebe ball. They hired the husband. <laughs> 17. And God akin unto Leah, and she conceived and bare Jacob the fifth son. Now you read verse 18. And Leah said, God has given me higher because Issachar. 19. And Leah conceived again and bare Jacob the sixth son. Verse 20. Six sons. And she called his name Zubalon. 
Now I read verse 21. And afterward she bare a daughter and called her name Dina. Now you read verse 22. And she conceived and bare a son and said, God had taken away my reproach. You read verse 24. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph that Jacob said unto Liban, Send me away that I may go unto my own place and to my own country. You read 26. Let, let, let's stop here. Sit down. <laughs> I don't know whether you noticed what I noticed. Jacob was innocent. But those two women were using him to play game. You are going to learn something today. And the major lesson that you are going to learn, hear me. In sports and in life, there is what we call healthy competition. There's what we call unhealthy competition. Let me first express that. Now, healthy competition is when somebody's success steers you up to do something better, to do more. That's a healthy competition. For instance, you are in school, somebody's always coming first. And you say, pastor said I should not compete. Ah, did that person came with four heads? He's always coming first in all subjects. And you are saying, pastor said I should not compete. I should be satisfied with being the last in the class. No. That person's success life should steer you up to say, no, I need to improve on my own. That's what we call healthy competition. I will also show you a healthy one. So we all need healthy competition. We need it. Now, why do we need it? For instance, somebody that you came up to, together, you know, in life, is working, is doing exploit, and nothing is happening in your life. It should steer you up to say, ah, we came to Ibadan, all the way from Mijebu, they together. We are working in the same company. He's progressing. Why am I not doing that? I need to work more on myself. Healthy competition steers you up to work more on yourself. Are you, am, am I communicating? It steers you up to what? To work more on yourself. But an unhealthy competition, pay attention, unhealthy competition is trying to do by all means what you know you do not have capacity to do because you want to pull somebody down. It's unhealthy. Unhealthy competition is when you are trying to do by all means what you know you do not have capacity for. Because somebody is doing it and you want to prove that that person is not special. You want to pull that person down. That's why you see that the Bible says the moment she noticed that her sister was giving birth to children, she envied him. That's on, on, on an unhealthy competition. You are feeling bad that somebody is doing something that you are not doing. And your feeling bad is not even with yourself. You are feeling bad with, about that person. You hate the person because that person is progressing. That's an unhealthy competition. The Bible says she envied him. She didn't, she envied her. She didn't like her sister again because her sister was giving birth to children. And if you look at the scriptures we read, you will see that her sister was not struggling to give birth to children. There was no, there was no struggle in giving birth to children for, 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 for Leah. She was just doing it easily. She was doing it as if she was just eating yam and beans, you know. As if she's just eating a bar. That's, she was just doing it without stress. I will show you some things as we go on. And the Bible says she envied her. Envy, hello, bow, boy, Now, you know what envy is? Envy is the bad feeling you nurse because of something that somebody has or is doing. You are feeling bad that somebody has this thing. That's what we call unhealthy competition. But we all need competition to excel. We need competition to become the best. Because no matter where you are as at present, you have still not gotten to the best of yourself. There's still something about you hidden that needs to come out. Am I communicating? There's still a best part of you that still needs to show. At least many years ago, I didn't know of so many things about myself that I'm knowing now. 
I thought that ministry was just preach, just preach the gospel, preach the message, you know, preach, just preach the gospel and go back. But do you know that as I was growing up in ministry, I discovered several parts of the gospel. I discovered that I don't need to preach only heaven to you. Because it is your spirit man that is going to heaven, not your flesh. I now discover that ah, I need to teach you how to prosper. And I discover I, teach, I need to teach you how to be healthy. Now all these things drove me into studying. Then when God called me to God, he didn't tell me so many other things. He didn't tell me that in the ministry, there will be an arm for education. In the ministry, there will be business. I didn't know. But I discovered these things when I was visiting other ministries. So we need competition. You know why I'm talking about this? Some people have this kind of lifestyle. Nothing moves them. It's not good. Nothing moves them. They'll say, even if my mate is, built, is buying the whole house in Liberty Road, from junction to junction, mm -hmm, they will even go and join him to eat. And it will not even move them. It will not ignite anything in them. If you have that nature, it's a bad nature. Somebody's success should trigger you, should awake something in you, to do something better about yourself so competition is not 100% bad but it's the unhealthy one where you don't like the person because the person is progressing you don't want to see the person because the person is doing something that you are not doing see I hear you can do better shout it a lot better now let's go deeper into the message for this evening I mean this morning you will see beloved that Leah gave birth to six sons by what? Divine ability. Now, those are the ones she gave birth on her own, not the ones her mates helped her to give birth to, to. On her own. She gave birth to six sons. I'm coming somewhere by divine ability. It was easy for her to get pregnant, but it was difficult for Rachel to get pregnant. So Rachel had to be appeasing uh, her mates. Oh, yeah, go sleep with my husband. When the child comes, that child will be my They say, okay, no problem. Uh, you go and sleep with my husband. The child will be mine. You go and sleep with my husband. The child will be mine. That's cello gate. Cello gate is the one called science. The noon. Because if they trace her, those children will not carry her gene. But Rachel, I mean Leah, it was easy for her. She was doing it without stress. Let's look at four facts about life you should know four facts about life you should know four facts about life you should know number one it is important you know that everything about life is based on peculiar grace take note of this very very well i come again it is important you know that everything about life is based on what we call peculiar grace which means we all cannot have the same level of grace the grace that God gave to you is different from what he gave to me everybody has that's why you don't compare yourself with, with anybody and one of the things that most people don't know is this most people have not really taken time to study their peculiar grace Jesus our Lord was speaking it as a parable. He said the kingdom of God is likened unto a man that wants to go to a, a, a long journey and he called three of his servants. Now pay attention. I, me, I, when I read Bible, I read Bible to, to understand every word. He, he now called three servants and gave them talents according to their various abilities. He gave them what they have capacity to handle. The Bible says he looked at one man. It's not that the man, their, their master wasn't rich enough to give everybody equal. But he studied all of them and knew their individual ability. Do you know your peculiar grace? Now when we talk about peculiar grace, I'm talking about, do you, do you know what God has given you the, uh, ability to do without stress? That you don't struggle to do it. It will come up okay, struggle at the Peculiar grace. Study yourself to that point. They were, they were asking one of our, our former footballers that he has retired from uh, the Super Eagles and they asked him, how come about this skill? He said, I just know right from childhood. When my mom sends me errand, I find it very easy to dribble. 
If I see container, I'll be dribbling myself. I'll be practicing it on. That's JJ Okocha. That's a peculiar grace he has. And you know that throughout the days of Mutsu Adekwaju in the whole of playing for Nigeria, we just noticed that he used to score from his head. So everybody now call him headmaster. Somehow, somehow, his head will be where the ball will enter the net. That's why understand the grace that God has put in you. There is nobody that is without a peculiar grace. That's the first fact of life I want you to discover. It was not difficult for, for Leah to give back to children, but ah, before Rachel could give back to one. But because she wanted to compete with her sister, she went to give back to the second one, Benjamin. It was at the process of giving back to Benjamin that she died. Have you discovered your peculiar grace? I was asking one, the man in charge of our te technical department. He told me many years ago. He said, Papa, right from time, I jo joining wires, joining wires. He said one day when he was young, they were looking for him at home. They didn't know that he had climbed the ladder, entered the ceiling, and was just sitting down there, and he was looking at wires. He said they were calling, the parents were looking for him. I showed you one new ceiling. Oh, Lord, you could see that. Oh, then we want to cope with wires. It is important you know it, that everybody about life, so everything about life, is based on peculiar grace. Take time to find your own. Find your peculiar grace. God has invested something in you. Find it. If you are able to find your peculiar grace, I'm telling you the fact. It won't be difficult for you to, to find yourself at the top. But the problem is you are not paying attention to yourself. You are not paying attention to God that can even show you. Haven't you seen people that are in the banking industry and you will know that these ones are a mistake in the bank? The bank was a jet banker. Oh, but salary loan the 25. Oh, it's only 31. Oh, it's one, oh, it's one, so I owe you. You will see a proper banker. He knows how to manage. You know that this one is a peculiar grace for him. So what's the first one again? It is important you know that everything about life is based on peculiar grace. Take your time to find your own. Find your, find your peculiar grace. In fact, can I tell you this truth? This is one of the advantages you have when you give your life to Jesus. When you are born again, the Holy Spirit of God in you, you know, every born again Christian has the Holy Spirit. The moment you are saved, you do, uh, 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 this one that some of you say, uh, uh, it is when you lay hand on them, they receive the gift of the spirit uh, they receive the holy spirit holy spirit doesn't come when you lay hand at the point of salvation you receive the spirit of god but for the manifestation of the gift of the spirit that's why we lay hand for holy ghost baptism but god doesn't even stay to, uh, there look at when uh, 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 peter was invited to minister to colonial's family he was still preaching the message of salvation uh, you have to give your life to christ you have to while he was talking the bible says the holy ghost came upon them they started speaking in tongues you know as it was ah you know why god did it peter would never have laid his hand on them because he had that mentality that under the law gentiles and jew they don't they don't relate if i go close to them they will defy me he only came because of the vision he saw he now said ah now that these gentiles have what we have what stops us from baptizing them do you know that when me I gave my life to Jesus, I didn't receive tongue speaking? Because some of you think that it's only those that have the Holy Spirit that can speak in tongues. If you don't speak in tongues, it means you don't have the Holy Spirit. I got born again. They lay hand on me, lay hand on me, lay everything. Nothing. When my pastor now says, speak as I'm speaking, I try to speak it, but when I get to my forget, it means it's not a gift yet. I'm only trying to copy what he told me to say. He will still lay hand on me. Oh yeah, prince. Oh yeah, begin to say as I'm saying. So I say, I will look at you now. By the time I get home, the 
the second day morning, I've forgotten what I said yesterday. Do you know that I was worried? Is it that I don't have the Holy Ghost? Is it that I don't have the Holy Spirit? Um, you know, and I was walking in church. Everybody is speaking in tongues. I can't speak in tongues. I, I, I was visiting programs until one day. First Square Gospel Church, Okebola, Koejo Street. They organized a program. A man of God from Lagos. A man of God came up. I, they, some people invited me. I went for the program. The man of God was just preaching. The man now said, the gift of the Holy Spirit, there are many. The gift of tongue speaking is one of them. The Holy Spirit may not start with you with tongue speaking. You can covet other gifts, but it's the Holy Ghost that determines the one you will receive. Then my spirit was open. As they were worshipping, I just started speaking in tongues. Nobody lay hand on me. I just started speaking in tongues. I just started speaking in tongues. I started speaking in tongues. So the second day, I thought I would, I would forget. I woke up the second day morning. Ha! Huh? What tongue did I speak yesterday? Oh, as I was worshiping, the thing started flowing again. Funny enough, my daughter now called me to one of uh, you know the one in school. Hey, daddy, daddy, I want to join the workers. They say if I don't speak in tongue, I cannot join workers. I said, Don't you speak in tongue? You see, I don't want to pretend. They are telling me to say what they say they are saying, and I cannot say what they are saying. I now remember my case. I say, you know what? Don't say what they are saying. If you say what they are saying, it's not tongue speaking. The devil will not have respect for it. But if they tell you, are you speaking in tongues, just say yes. Join the workforce. Along the line, you will flow. Why did I even get to tongue speaking? We are speaking of something else. <laughs> eh? Maybe that changes for somebody. So, discover your peculiar grace. What has God given you? Pay attention to it. Some of you are gifted when it comes to business. Gifted. Some of you are talented in fashion. Remember Moji's case, those days. My secretary in the office, she would just always be the bio. You know what she's doing? She's designing, drawing, thank you, drawing different kind of design. Drawing different. Then Moji will now go back home. She will go and pick up pieces of clothes. She will use scissors to cut it. She will now go and use uh, needle and thread to sew it. She will sew back. She will sew little gown and wear it. We now told her, this is a peculiar grace. Muji said, sir, go and learn fashion. You know, when you have peculiar grace, you go and ask skill to it. Skill is not impacted. Skill is learned. So she went to learn fashion designing. She was doing very well. Got married to a CAC brother. A prophet met her and told her that they said her destiny is not a it's not fashion. They saw us selling food. If you see Moji now, she's now hawking food around. Era rice. Ah, you just money money Moji shop where da? Only but also people look into mama jammy. Ah, any prophet? Ten daya omolo molu. Ah, can they shape for him? They are in the cuckoo joke with the boy. When I invited her, talk with her. I told her, I said, your life is shapeless. Would you come back to church? I told her, I said, come back. Let me pastor you. But he said they told her the battle of this and we'll go by bye bye you go by lonely when they come ah okay continue patient Jonathan number two so don't forget discover your peculiar grace number two you will be distracted from discovering discovering your peculiar grace if you continue to focus on what others have that you don't have You will be distracted from discovering your peculiar grace if you continue to focus on what others have that you don't have. Yes, we all cannot have the same kind of grace. There are some things that A may have, B does not have. Don't let what they have distract you. 
Mirror's feet, Uti Ramoto, Uti La America, a fashion design in Luji, Uti La America, Uti Uti La America, what to share testimony Canada. I shame me now in law called fashion by. I was listening to Dr. Aboki. Dr. Aboki is a success uh, uh, preacher, a medical doctor, you know, that turned businessman. He told us in the seminar, I watched it online. He said, Do you know I visited a man? You know what attracted me to him? I saw two bodyguards standing beside him, and they are mobile police officers. They are always following me around. So I went to ask him, What job do you do? He said, I'm a mechanic. What university did you graduate from? He said, no, I learned it. I learned mechanic. And I learned it so well. I know it so well. And when I got to a point, I traveled abroad to go and study it more. And I came back to Nigeria. He stays in Wari. He repairs cars. He said his consultation fee alone. Dr. Aboki said, even me that I'm a medical doctor, Boy Scout is not following me. Not to talk <laughs> that he not this man. Can, can you see? If you think that okay, it is medicine, you know what everybody is doing now. Is everybody is jackpying now? So go and study. If you what do you want to study? Nothing. What do you want to study? Nothing. What do you want to study? Nothing. At why? Jackpying. I want to jackpot. I want to jack. I want. You may come out of your nursing school and that time is no longer relevant. Stop looking at other people neglecting yourself you have something develop your own do what develop your own i'm studying our, our country nigeria you know we are struggling with uh uh, uh what's this thing that they used to refine oil refinery abi but do you know that while we are struggling with getting one refinery to work the boys in worry they are refining crude in the creed they said they arrested some these guys if it's if they are abroad maybe they are listening to me without refinery how are you doing it locally these guys in the creed they are refining crude oil they will extract this they will extract fuel our own military will arrest to kill them because they, they are doing it illegally. Yes, they are doing it illegally, but we need their brain. All the brains that we are throwing away in Nigeria, they are abroad. Their best doctors are Nigerians. Their best nurses are Nigerians. Now, there's a, 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 a young boy now, Balogun. Balogun is nine years old. He manufactured a software. Nine year old. Harvard University now has inducted him as a lecturer nine year old say i have something i didn't hear you i listened to reverend sam Adeyemi many years ago he said he was struggling in ministry struggling he said, God now said to him, Sam, you have what it takes to succeed. He said, so he now went on a self-discovery retreat. Daystar Christian Center pastor. He said, he went on a self-discovery retreat. He said, I went to the beach and my wife and I went for three days. He said, what was I doing? I just sat down and I was asking myself, Sam, what do you know how to do best? Sam, what do you know how to do best? Sam, what do you know how to do best? Sam, what do you know how to do best? Sam, what do you know how to do best? That was what he was asking. Ah, Pastor W.F. Kumuyi preached holiness and all the world knew him. Ah, D.Q. Dukoya preached prayer. The entire world knew him. He said he was asking, Sam, what do you know how to do best? Sam, he said it was while he came down, he discovered that he flows easily teaching success principles. He, he, I come again, he, he flows easily preaching success principles he said at the end of this self-discovery retreat he told his wife honey let's go i've discovered it i found it what did you find i found it he said when i came out i calculated it i sat down together 
success power and the next thing I, I look for the radio station they listen to in the whole of Lagos the most listened to radio station and I started he said that is the secret of Sam at the MA success till today go and discover yourself the more you look at others hear me the more you, you get lost from yourself the more yourself will become strange to you we were told that he removed a lot of his ribs he dislocated a lot of his joints Are you here with me? If you continue to focus on what others have, hear me, you will lose sight of what you have. Even when jo Jacob stole the blessing of Esau, Esau still became great by the one blessing his father gave him. I told us now during the week. Did you listen to what I said during the week? Jacob did what? He stole the birthright of Esau. Jacob stole the blessing of Esau 21 years after when they met. Esau came with 400 men. All the gifts that Jacob came with to give him, he said, I don't need it. I have enough. Means all that he stole from him did not even work for him. That was why Jacob now when he saw the angel opportunity, ah, eh, whoa, but right here, Oshishe. Father's blessing, Timothy here, Oshishe. If you don't bless me, I will not let you go. Unko uniko, eh? Kogbe mi di anywhere. The minimum fee. Am I communicating? I said four. Let's take number three. Number three. Number three. Understand that the people you are trying to compete with may be doing what you are doing. Sorry, the people you are trying to compete with may be doing what you are about to do by sweat easily. Let, let me come again so you can understand. We are looking at the fourth, fourth fact, fact of life. The people you are trying to compete with may be doing what you are about to do by sweat easily now totu must be i want to fair my bafi gagban ga yen ohun ti wo fe fi agun ma se awon le ma fi rorun se was it not yesterday or this month okay it was yesterday i was going for i was coming for toshilo and i saw a woman jogging with her daughter i almost wanted to tell her that mommy and for my sile the woman was jogging the daughter was running the daughter was running the, and the woman was just the daughter was just like she would be about four or five years old. And instantly I was looking at life. That can you do you know that that's how life is? Somebody is killing chicken every weekend stresslessly. You that the whole of your salary in a month is twenty two thousand five hundred. You now say kilo day, kilo shewan, kilo mashuwan, ajama mapari. So calm down, stop competing. Because you are sweating. The person may not be sweating. Do you know that this season that the fire is cast, some people are still using AC. Turn the wine down, Uri. And the kini, AC will not do it to me, Lelo. Ah.
Tu vas te faire comme il va s'aller wind down. My friend, calm down. Life is in faces, men are in sizes. Some boys pasted it online. I love it. He says, Stop running. If they say by the time we are ready, land has finished, then we buy a house. Ah, B. Okay, you saw it too. I had to like it multiple times and reshare it. I, you know, they say there's no more land in Liberty Road. People are buying houses. What then that won't go? What's your alimony? let whoever is buying car buy car when your own time come his own will be outdated that's why don't do don't try to run with anybody that, we don't have the same level of grace we don't have the same capacity ha ha I heard that she wants to get married I must get married and the brother is not ready you're now telling your boyfriend your, your fiancé don't worry I will help you pay my dowry we must work here I have some savings. You don't know that a man eh, who cannot go extra mile to pay your dowry cannot love you. I always tell every sister, at that point, don't, don't struggle for love. If he said this, I, I don't know, your family, I, I don't think I'm ready. It's a proof that he cannot go extra mile for you. I have some sisters don't like this thing. Let him be the one to marry you. Don't be the one to marry him. Your responsibility in your marriage, the Bible says you submit. It is his own responsibility to, to love. What is the proof of love? It's sacrifice. At this, my own wife now, they gave us list to, I paid everything. They asked me for one bag of rice. I gave them two. Actually, let's not leave the message don't leave don't leave the main thing let's be here you know some ladies I just want to get married I just that's why if we don't if you don't do the workings well like in mathematics abi apu you can't get the answer if you miss the workings you can't get the answer abi if you miss the steps let him go and work hard if he loves you the same thing i was telling one of our daughters oh she got married i just have to have it ah me tibi mo me tibi mo the husband brought her to me they stood here Papa money ever may be sure you can love money. She be me lock away. I now ask her, sister, show me come tell mom para in. Tell so for coin tell the so for me. E te te so e di te. We are any reason tell she believe where she live mom. She left church and start going from prophet to prophet's place. See, don't compete. The person may not be sweating. May not be just continue to do your work easily. My mentor shared with us. He said, building has never been as this easy for us. He said the season that we are in. If you go to the city of it, they are building. They are building the wonder city. At the other side, building the city of faith, this side. Let me now say, what is Bishop Adela doing that I cannot do? <laughs> Swear to be like as thick as blood. Let's take the fourth one and close. Make up your mind. Four facts of life. Make up your mind to be the best version of yourself not to be better than anybody so if you are going to compete compete with yourself 
make up your mind to be the best version of yourself not to be better than anybody now how can you be the best version of yourself discover your uniqueness I just want to be me and the best of me you see, if you understand these four truths about life these four facts I'm telling you you will live a peaceful life Your blood prayer will not be going high unnecessarily. Make up your mind to be the best version of yourself. Stop competing. He has built a duplex. I'm going to change my own structure. But yes, I'm going to build a duplex like him. You don't even know the reason why he's building a duplex. You don't know whether he has material available for him. Somebody said, don't worry, I have some materials. Come and carry it. You, you know, you don't know. You should not say, eh? You say, you go to get home, you change, tell your wife, my dear, we are changing our structure. It's not going to be three bedroom flat again. We are building a duplex. Let's show that our whole family that what they can do, we can do better. Beloved, Rachel died trying to give back to her second. When Leah gave back to six without stress. Rachel, money. Uh, okay, tell me your son to give me that man's trick. Oh, yeah, you go and sleep with our son. So come Leah. Leah said, Louis. He came out, he's pregnant. Shaking to the leg, to the leg, came out. Lord you Leah, you should mess on be or mess on. You know there are some women like that. We used to have one woman like that, uh, the King Sam's wife. Could be more hospital rely here. One of the ones to be all of them unfair, unfair match or lose bed by on come wole le. On my job. Could have a compete with Lwenti. Iru woman here. About almost six or seven children. We had to be begging out it all. Papa Mulai, come on, be big on who they're on long. Only could I let you tell me, move for you, move for bed by you. Let me close first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Let's use it to close. Shagada basking the level, sir. Are you blessed? Rachel, Rachel died though. She died giving birth to Benjamin. She died giving birth to Benjamin. If she had known, she would have stayed with Joseph. Only one. But she wanted to compete. Okay, well, she Because everybody is jabbing now. You two want to. You better follow God's plans for your life. Revolution Media Manuel said one. Let's let me close with it. Leave that scripture. He said he went to Jerusalem. He said that one Nigerian ran and was shouting, Man of God. Man of God, man of God, man of God. Ah, what happened? Please help me. Anything, any amount, anyhow. I want to leave this country. He said, he now called him. What happened? He said, I was, I was in South Africa. Struggling. When some people say, there is a job in Jerusalem, in Israel. Ah, he said, he now look at him, Israel. There is nothing in Israel. He said, they said there is a job in Israel. In Israel, I will prosper. He said, so I sold everything I had in South Africa to come to Israel. He said, I am inside tomato farm. We walk from morning to night. He said, today I heard that some people are coming from Africa. That was why I had to struggle to follow the truck out. 
If I don't follow the truck back, there's no transport. How much are they paying? And you know, Facebook is very good now with Photoshop. You may be in that, that tomato farm, take a picture, do Photoshop, send it to you. You too want to travel to Israel. Abi, you want to travel to Israel? There is a family too in, in the UK. I'm not saying don't travel. I'm not saying don't jack out. But make sure it is not out of competition. Make sure that you have prayed and God is leading you to do it. The man said he, has, he had three cars and a house in Nigeria. They told him that life is better here in UK. I sold everything. I gave 13 million naira to get this visa to come here. He said, but now there's nothing. They didn't cover his face. He let them see my face. There's nothing. He said, the healthcare job they promised. He said, we are exhausted they have exhausted it so no job and with health care visa that i came with he said i can't do that job then for us to wait you know where they saw him he came to the food bank to beg for food he said they have food bank for people that are hungry only alone and you know some of you wives, you are telling your husband, hey, what shall my law? And him alone, talk about something shalom, what shall my law? Shall my send there? And law? To the king, yeah, maker. My boy, maker, to law. Who will send the call? He won't want God to be too tingly. Somebody said, hear me, I'm saying you truth. If the, uh, the America that everybody is talking about is the one that he's living in, you cannot be spending the way you are spending now. But if God is saying, I'm sending you, you know he will make way for you then. Rise up on your feet if you are blessed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you are going like Joseph, that Joseph went to Egypt and prospered here. But if God is not the one sending you, I love one of our sons. Rise up now. He went to Dubai like that. He had everything is working in Dubai. He gathered money and went to Dubai. He got to Dubai and called me instantly. As he was landing, he told me, I'm, I'm coming back tomorrow. I said, why are you coming back? He said, sir, I have built my own house in Nigeria. I have a car in Nigeria. I have three shops in a national market. Sir, all the people I met here, my life is better than them. And I got where we sleep. They said we don't buy, we don't pay for rent for house. We pay for sp bed space. Ah! He said, "Now, is it where we sleep? I sleep in a comfortable bed, on a comfortable bed." He said, "Funny enough, the job that is available." He said, "When I calculated it, there's no I can spend send money home." He came back the third day. But you know, thank God for him. Some people, uh, the spirit of competition will not let them to come back. They say, ah, what would they say? No, 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 I can't come back. I can't come back. I can't come back. They will be deceiving themselves and deceiving people. They will take a photograph, Photoshop it, and send it. Find your peculiar grace. Apple can never grow in Nigeria. But Apple is everywhere in Nigeria. Find your grace, find your place. Then you, you will shine all over the world. Have you learned something today? You didn't hear me. Have you learned something today? And once you find your grace, look at me. Celebrate your grace. Appreciate what you have. Be glad with what you have. Anything you appreciate, appreciate. Do we have anybody coming for the first time? We are closing the service now. The anointing service. Any first timer? So every one of us, we are members of staff. We'll be anointing you for laughter. That's what the Lord told us for the month of November. We will laugh. Events that will make us laugh will happen in our lives. You will not have reason to cry. In the name of Jesus. Father, I bless this oil in Jesus' name.
let your hand come upon it as we are anointed with this oil father we call that the events that will make us rejoice will continue to take place in our lives thank you father in jesus name we pray amen <laughs>